Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be drawing George Kittle from the San Francisco 49ers. And uh, in this drawing, I'm drawing him running with the ball and uh, just gonna give a little explanation of my uh, drawing process as I go through this video. So basically here I'm doing the initial sketching phase and just sort of, you know, with a regular pencil, just sketching out uh, outline of how everything's gonna go. and. Uh, as you can see, I, I erased his head there because his, his whole helmet was too small. And that's the benefit of this initial stage is that you can always erase, you can always change and make decisions if something's not looking right. Um, once you start putting ink down, you're kind of stuck with it. So uh, you always want to do pencil first. <clears throat> you always want to do pencil first so you can, if you change your mind, you can erase. Uh, next, I'm using a, a Pigma Micron pen. I believe it's a 0.5 uh, size to sort of outline um, all the lines that I drew. And uh, like I said, once you start, once you go to this phase, uh, it's very difficult to change anything if you make a mistake. So that's why the initial uh, pencil sketch is so important. But here I'm just going to basically outline everything in a thin outline. And I'm just outlining every detail that there is. Um, and just sort of tracing everything. And um, it's always interesting the way that uh, the drawing looks at this phase. I feel like it always looks very, uh, very plain. And uh, yeah, I also think it, it looks very plain at this stage. So I think it's kind of funny to, it's kind of interesting to see how the transformation goes uh, once you get beyond that, this phase. So I'm just outlining everything, outlining numbers and and everything there. So now we go to the phase where I'm uh, using the thicker pen to basically uh, outline or thicken up the outlines. And initially I sort of outline the whole outer uh, edge of everything with one big thick outline and then after doing that I kind of go into uh, the details and sort of use a thicker outline on the details that need more emphasis and basically if you uh, if you're drawing in this style you can make some things uh, more accentuated depending on whether you use thicker outlines or thinner lines and basically um, I use the thicker outlines to basically, uh, there's, you know, there's a couple different reasons why I would make something a thicker line. If it's basically to outline a major uh, point of emphasis, such as like the helmet or his arm, uh, then I do a thicker line or also just uh, if there's something that has a lot of depth to it, like there's a, you know, a bunch of depth between uh, the arm that's coming in front of his body and his jersey so that I'd use a thicker line there So basically uh, that style I really like it a lot because you can use it with uh, with just varying the stroke thickness of your lines You can really show a lot of depth and make your, your drawing a lot more dynamic Like I was saying when all the lines are are the same width the drawing looks very flat but just by thickening up some lines without even using any cross hatching yet uh, it can really add a lot of depth. So I'm doing that. And then I also, uh, a few spots that are some extreme shadows, I uh, put some shadows in there. So now I'm going back to the Pigma Micron and I'm using a, uh, a 0.1 size and uh, I'm using it for basically hatching and cross hatching. And this is a technique of just drawing a bunch of uh, parallel lines next to each other. And uh, this is to add some shading, adds uh, even more depth um, <clears throat> uh, to the drawing. It's a way of adding shading, uh, even though you know, I'm just dealing with you know, black ink and the white paper. If you use hat hatching and cross hatching, then you're able to uh, get some more three dimensionality to your drawing and uh, sort of have some grayscale on the image, even though you're really just dealing with black and white colors. And also uh, things like his uh, his armband thing, 
uh, has a certain texture to it. So I was able to add some texture with the hatching. So hatching is very useful. Like I said, you can use it to just add sort of a gradient of shadow. You can add texture depending on what you're doing. So very useful technique, very versatile. That's why a lot of uh, comic book artists use a lot of hatching and cross hatching. It's because of uh, how good of a technique it is. And uh, the style that I've been drawing in, it's very similar to uh, comic book style. So that's kind of where I'm getting my inspiration from there. And I'm uh, just adding the last few details here of hatching stuff, just little, little shadows, add little Gonna add a little bit more depth to the wrinkles and his jersey and stuff like that and details to the helmet things like that so just wrapping up all the details there before we move on to the color <clears throat> and so now is the fun part now is where we add the color and uh, first we're going in here with uh, a red base, just coloring in all of the, the parts that are red on his helmet. There's a little bit of red on the logo. And then the main red part is the jersey. And uh, these markers that I have, they've got a, a, thin, uh, a thin tip as well as a thick tip. So I'm using a thin tip to sort of outline everything so that I've got nice crisp lines. I'm not going over the, the lines that I'm coloring in. So I'm doing that, and then uh, after I've got the, the troublesome areas, then I bust out the, the thick chisel tip to sort of fill in the large areas. And just putting one flat layer of color on everything that's gonna be red. So on his jersey, on his helmet, and a uh, stripe on his pants. <clears throat> and then now I'm doing the uh, flat color of the, the yellow or the gold on his helmet as well as the gold that's going to be on his pants. And there again, I'm using the, the thin tip and the thick tip, uh, depending if I'm filling in a large area or tracing around a small area. And then now I'm adding in the, the skin tone. And there again, just doing a base of the skin tone. And uh, in this drawing, I want to just do all the, the flat colors first. I feel like uh, it's cooler to see the process with all the flat colors uh, initially before I start adding shading. So I've got the football there, and then now I'm starting to sort of add some shading with uh, with the, gr the light gray, um, using it for the, the gray face mask as well as the gray armband, and then uh, also adding some shading on the white areas uh, with the gray marker here, the lightest gray marker that I have. <clears throat> And then next, add a little bit more depth to the shadows with a, a shade of gray that's a little bit darker. And adding depth to, uh, to anything that's white or gray. And now I'm adding uh, some depth with my second shade of the, of the darker red. And so I'm basically just coloring in pretty much everything except for that, that rim of light, as if it's like a, a backlit um, image, like the lighting is coming from behind him. So I'm just adding in that uh, second layer of red, add some more depth to the drawing. And then the uh, same thing with the yellow or the gold, adding a second layer of gold to add some more depth to it. And there again, I'm leaving kind of like a, a rim light highlight uh, around the edges. And then same thing with the face, I have a secondary skin tone that I'm using to uh, to create more depth and to just fill in the shadows on his face and on his arm. <clears throat> and I was using a, a reference photo here. So um, I loose, you know, very closely followed the lighting that was in the reference photo uh, with just a few variations just based on what I felt looked cooler. But for the most part, I just followed how the lighting was in real life in the reference image I had. 
and uh, just adding some more uh, darker shades of gray to all the armbands and everything that's white, like his gloves and stuff. Just to sort of add a little bit more depth and make the drawing a little bit more dynamic. And now I'm finally adding the last bit of shade of gray to the face mask, which is actually gray, as well as his armband thing. And then now the last darkest shade of red I just use for a few shadows, like in the wrinkles and stuff. Um, same thing with the yellow, the last darkest shade of yellow, just use it very sparingly here and there to add some depth to the shadows. And now I'm doing a little bit of blending on the skin tones so that the shadows aren't so harsh. And then uh, just doing a little bit of touch up work, blending everything together. <clears throat> And we're almost done now. I'm just adding uh, a few touch ups with the gray. Add a little bit more shadows, a little bit more depth. And then lastly, I go in with a, uh, with a Uniball white gel pen so I can add some white highlights on top of everything. And uh, this is super useful. Uh, if you need to add white on top of it, obviously markers, you know, there's no white marker, you can't, once you put a, a marker ink down, it's there for good, but with this uh, gel pen, you can add white on top of the color, so it's super useful. And uh, there you have it, that's the final drawing. So uh, let me know in the comments how you think this one turned out. I feel like it turned out pretty good uh, compared to the drawings that I've been making. I really tried to concentrate on this one and and uh, really do a good job and really focus on it. So I think it turned out pretty good. Um, if you like uh, content like this, definitely subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next video.